Hello, we are live and uh, welcome to this ABI Electronics webinar. My name is William Santos and I will be your host today. Thank you all for joining us today and, and, and to those of you watching this recording uh, that we can be publishing on, on YouTube later. I hope that you and your families are safe and coping with this lockdown that affects most of the world's population currently. Uh, today's webinar is titled, Are We Prepared to Repair Industrial Equipment Following COVID-19? Joining me today for this very interesting discussion are experts based in five countries who will be sharing some of their experiences in this sector. For those who don't know, don't know us yet, ABI Electronics is a, is a UK-based manufacturer of advanced diagnostic and component level uh, solutions, okay? Component level repair equipment. ABI started producing its solutions in 1983, right here in Barnsley, South Yorkshire, where I'm speaking from. And our products are used by companies operating in over 20 different sectors, including defense, transport, aerospace, automotive, um, um, industrial services. And our products allow technicians and engineers to troubleshoot and repair electronic technologies down to the printed circuit board or PCB level and component level as well. Now, back to today's main subject, this crisis will, unfortunately, wipe out many companies and brands making the support of critical systems disappear. We believe that if you work in electronics, automation, robotics or mechatronics, now is the time to seriously consider upping your repair and maintenance skills down to the component and PCB level. And why is that? Well, to keep production line running and the core business operational, organizations will require technical staff that stands up to the challenge of maintaining aging assets, assets with little or no support from the original manufacturer. Servitization will also drive demand for people with these skills. And brands that don't embrace this new reality will have to prepare to exit the market. So today, I want to explore this question. Are we ready to focus on the opportunities while overcoming the challenges ahead of us? Okay. So this is our panel, and here's the format that uh, we're going to adopt, uh, which I hope is, fami is familiar to, uh, uh, for, for everyone. So we'll be asking uh, our panelists to speak for five minutes, and then we're going to have a Q&A session that will last roughly around um, 20 to 25 minutes. I'm really grateful for our guest speakers uh, who come from the industrial electronics sector and who have taken the time out to share their experiences with us more widely. I have Ricardo Rodriguez uh, from Brazil. I have uh, Panayotis uh, Tsipinidis, or simply Panos, from Canada. I got um, Sankalp Maldic from Chile and Mr. Kanat Mamonov from Kazakhstan. And to wrap it up, ABI product manager in the US, Mr. Fauzi Taha, he was going to, he's going to give us a quick introduction uh, to ABI's Boardmaster Diagnostic System. Um, and finally, we're going to be recording this, uh, this webinar, so um, uh, just, just make sure that we can, we can share with the, uh, the wider audience. Okay, so let me just move to the next um, slide here. Um, well, one of the, the guest speakers that we had lined up for today was Mr. Ray Holden, and unfortunately, uh, Ray was, was, was too busy, he couldn't, he couldn't join us. But he was kind enough to uh, send us this um, quote with an update on how he's been using the board master system from ABI. He sent these, and I quote, just to add a comment regarding the ABI board master, we recently started using it to verify newly manufactured brake cards that failed to work when installed. They were deemed to be not calibrated correctly due to the manufacturer using the original specifications and not the current uh, fleet specifications. We recalibrated all the brake cards using the board master, and this is done in stages. Initially, uh, no power applied to the, uh, the PCB at first, and then power on, followed by parameter validation. This was a great success and is now the standard process for this fleet repair and test. We also took the opportunity to expand on the logic tables, which never formed part of the original documentation. Great tool to have. Thank you very much, Ray Holden from Irish Rail. Uh, he's the overhaul repair manager and a friend here of uh, API Electronics. Thank you very much for this quote, and we hope to see you 
See you soon here. Now, let's take us, let's take to um, uh, our uh, first guest today. We have Ricardo Rodriguez. Ricardo is, um, is my countryman. He's based in Brazil and uh, he's the owner of Bessadruk. Uh, Ricardo graduated in industrial um, automation, electronics and microprocessors. Ricardo leads a team of repair engineers and technicians in Brazil, servicing complex circuit boards used in offset printers. Uh, his team at Bessadru provides invaluable services to the commercial printing industry in the region. Uh, Ricardo, can you hear me okay? Hello, everyone. It will be a great pleasure to spend this time here with you, where I would like to talk a little about myself and my experience. Uh, I have been working for electronic maintenance since 1998, and since 2011, when I co-founded Besser Group, I have been working with circuit board repair. And here at Besser Group, we provide, among the others, repair service to equipments for printing industry throughout the national territory and some counties in South America and Chile. So, in the past nine years, I have acquired a lot of experience in the process of repair circuit boards at the component level. But I confess that the beginning I had many difficulties and I had to overcome some barriers. Uh, since to find ambisolate components or to hire a qualified labor, and sometimes you need to uh, train our technician right here. One of the biggest difficulties that I have until today is to get technical information about equipment that will be repaired. Sometimes not even a simple connection diagram is available or nor even a simple information about the defect or the way it works. And sometimes customers simply tell us that it's not to work, but believe me, sometimes it is. I believe Most you. Manufacturers <laughs> are not interested in providing information about their equipment. So most of the time we need to analyze them and create our own database. Right. Uh, this analysis process, let's say uh, alone in the dark, does not depend only on a deep technical knowledge in uh, electronics. Uh, some tools and good equipments are so needed to assist us uh, to, to the fine, uh, fault finding process. Uh, able to give you as a necessary support to analyze it from a simple, completely analogic circuit board to a complex CPU with embedded software from simply switching power supply to a complex motor power drive or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I started, uh, the search for repair on circuit board was not so common. The priority was to get the equipment up and run as soon as possible. So, as soon as the circuit board was identified as a defective one, the best option was to replace it by a new one. Mm -hmm. But the economic scenario has been changing ever since. Awareness for not reduce so much electronic waste, obsolescence, and the choice for cost reduction were added to this equation. Made the security board repair the best way now. Uh, because repairing electronic boards, complex or simple, will always be cheaper than buy a new one. So lowering cost is now more important than ever. Because according to the current world scenario, in which factors are closed and production process interrupted, at least at slow pace, just could not an option, but but a necessity. You know? mm -hmm. I believe that once once the company starts to resume production, it will still take uh, time to make up for the lost time, and investment in new equipments will be cut. So to keep you what is working and working well. Repair will continue to be the best way. Then. That's why we have to be prepared, trained, and equipped for this demand that tends to grow and be able to provide the necessary support to keep the industry. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Ricardo. Some some very good, um, very good points there. I'm, I'm sure we're going to be. Uh, 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 tapping into some of the subjects you mentioned there, like uh, obsolescence and so on. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, next up, we have uh, Panos. So Panos from uh, um, company Epson Logic in Canada. 
and uh, he's probably enjoying enjoying a cup of coffee because uh, it's quite early there. And uh, so Panos runs this uh, international repair business in Canada, in Edmonton, in, and uh, he's an expert in how to find faults. And his company, uh, Epuson Logic, will repair any fault in industrial kit that comes through the door by day or by night. Welcome, Panos. How are you? Hello, hello to you, everyone. Good, good. I'm originated from Greece. I moved to Canada about seven years ago. I've been in, I've been involved with uh, industrial repair since I was a kid. I'm 36 years old and I have started since I was 15 years old when I started putting my hands on industrial equipment. Uh, I'm not an electro electronics engineer, but I'm uh, an industrial electrician. Uh -huh. I uh, I went to school as an industrial electrician, uh, but I always was attracted from industrial automation. Uh -huh. So, automation and electronics, these two things are combined. So it was needed to start training myself about electronics, and always I was facing, I was finding faulty boards on the machine that I was on the machines that I was repairing. So I started repairing them by myself, mm -hmm. slowly, slowly. Anyways, uh, that whole thing, uh, my uh, my involvement in the electronics, it uh, I saw the need of uh, how important it is to repair something, especially if you are a technician that you can service in a machine. If you are able to repair the board as well, you saving a lot of time and money mm -hmm. to the customer. So since I moved here in Canada, I decided I, I started doing the same stuff I was doing back home in Greece. And uh, I saw that, especially here in Canada, the, the whole idea of repairing something is completely disappeared from this market. Everyone was replacing it. They were seeing a, a failure, like a damage on a board, right away. Throw it away, get a new one. But that thing is going to change because there is there are major reductions on the budgeting in every company, and uh, they won't be able to afford on just replacing something. And there are so many technology companies who were. There were OEMs that were building pieces of equipment that they cannot support it anymore because nobody's buying new equipment now and they will stop buying new equipment. So they would be out of business. So there is no support from those systems. Uh -huh. And it's going to be a, a demand of repairing them. Otherwise, they have to throw away the whole equipment. Even there is a tiny fault, a small, very small fault on a board, but no one is fixing it. They have to throw it away. If they throw it away, there is no replacement board. Mm -hmm. So someone has to fix it. There is a great potential for service technicians. Every company, they have to invest on training their staff and encourage them on how to fix it. I believe more than 95% of uh, a faulty boards, they can be repaired easily. Wow. That, that saves time because most of the people that they are attending on, the, on this webinar, they're familiar with electronics. And they know that the faults that we're finding, they're very common, not in every case, but they're very common faults. Easy to repair. So it's worth the effort. At least give it a try to fix it. Mm -hmm. It's not magic. It's not, uh, it's not a technology that it came from a different planet. <laughs> we created this technology. That's true. Someone designed it, someone built it. So someone can fix it even if there is no documentation 
I've been through this all the time. We have a, we have a system that there is a fault. I'm asking for documentation. There is zero documentation. There is nothing. And then I have to think outside the box. Actually, I live outside the box. So the way that I'm approaching the problems is sometimes it's kind of weird. And people, they ask me, like, what are we doing right now? I say, don't worry. Trust me. There are three ways to fix a thing. Mm -hmm. The right way, the wrong way, and the Greek way. Yeah, and everyone is asking, what, what's the Greek way? The Greek way is you cannot say it's right, but also you cannot say it's wrong, but it always works. Good. So make it work. You can find a way, always. But you have to think outside the box. Don't, you don't need to think with, uh, based on a path that someone showed you before. Because many technicians, they see a, a new fault, they have a new case in their hands, and they say, oh, nobody showed me how to do this, so I'm stopping. No, that's the mistake for a technician. The technicians, they have to try. They have to try to find a new path for fixing something. Don't expect someone to show you. Nobody knows everything. All of us. We're finding new stuff. Every day, it's a new lesson. So just take your time. Think about it. Try to find as much information you can. And work hard. That's brilliant. Always, there is a way. Always. Okay. I'm facing, I'm facing that stuff every day. Mm -hmm. Every day, since I, since I was a kid. No, that's, that's very good, Panos. Thank you. That's very good. Um, right, we're going to come back to you in, in a moment, yeah? But, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to be reviewing some of the uh, interesting cases that you have there. You know, I, I know you've got loads of uh, interesting stories for us uh, later on. Um, moving on, uh, we've got um, um, Kanat. So Kanat Mamonov, who is joining us all the way from Kazakhstan today. And uh, well, Kanat is a transportation and engineering specialist, and he manages, manages a team of highly qualified locomotive support engineers in Kazakhstan. Uh, Kanat played a leading role in the creation of Alstom's state-of-the-art facilities in his country and uh, it is one of the most modern lo locomotive repair centers in the world. So, Kanat, welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us today. How are you? Fine, thank you very much, William. Hello, everyone. I think quite all of you, quite all of us, are doing well during this tough period with COVID-19. So, Absolutely. Take, take care, guys. So, thank you very much for giving a speech. Uh, um, I would like to present a little bit myself. I'm a uh, taking position engineering leader since 2015 and working for Alstom Kazakhstan company. The main uh, business of Alstom, I mean, not the main, but the first business of Alstom in Kazakhstan is the maintenance of 27 passenger locomotives, which are not produced by, which are not designed by Alstom. So it's um, another company who is manufactured and uh, supplied these locomotives to our country. So actually, we have a long-term contract. It's about 25 years to maintain these locomotives. And the big issue, what I would like to speak about is actually presented on my several slides. Okay. So we're going to talk about the PCB, uh, which is located in the auxiliary converter. This issue is, uh, when I just received, when I just come to company, I have faced this issue from the beginning. So. We have a PCB, it's uh, taken from control board of auxiliary converter. The PCB is issuing every time. If you can see uh, through the chart, mm -hmm. we have selected corrective top 10 issues mm -hmm. um, we are facing on our locomotives. So number one is auxiliary converter. You can see during the five years, mm -hmm. it's 227 cases. Imagine guys, how how big this figure is. So, mm -hmm. and if you just simply divide it on five years, you will figure out that failures per year is about 
45 times and 80 percent is related to pcb so uh this is a auxiliary converter but 80 percent of these failures is related to pcb so it means 60 36 times and how came that this pcb is so bad actually it is a reliability issue and the obsolescence issue and right. uh, uh, um, those two reasons those two main reasons uh driving us or uh, forcing us to launch in-house repair why because obsolescence not allowing us to buy these components any from anywhere it is stopped producing it is stopped being manufactured so it is just impossible to source regarding reliability it is very high as you can see from chart and mm -hmm. our contractual agreement is to make this 27 locomotives available for 95%. It means that our customer would like to see at least 25%, 25 locomotives out of 27 functioning and working. These two cases, you can just, uh, William, please. Okay. Yeah. One second. Yeah. Push, pushed us to, to, to launch, to launch uh, in house repair. But as you might facing, uh, as usually it's done uh, everywhere, I guess, we don't have any support from original equipment manufacturer of this PCB. So no documentation is available, no electrical diagrams and uh, no bill of materials. Uh, and uh, it's, it is absolute, we just simply cannot buy it. So what we're gonna do, the first before to purchase a brilliant equipment board master, we have launched uh, reverse engineering of schematics this pcb why because we we we, we have decided to repair it but without schematics it was a little bit complex for us at the beginning so we have launched reverse engineering we have obtained a schematical um, diagram of this pcb from our supplier external supplier who uh, who has worked on that uh, and just starting to read the schematics and repairing the boards I agree with Panos for 100%. We have discovered the weak point of this hardware of PCB. Now we can say that the problem is closed. We are repairing every PCB of uh, this auxiliary converter and we can deal with it. Yes, of course, we can see that the weak point is software. The software, we, we have no possibility to, uh, to duplicate, to reverse engineer software, or even to extract the code. It is closed. But I would say, guys, more than 80% of faulty boards never facing a problem with software because this brain is always protected well. It's always protected well on, on every PCB. In our case, let's say maybe 9 out of 10 we repair easily, but only one is affected by software, it, but it's nothing. That's a very that's interesting a figure, uh, Kanat. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but that's that's a very interesting figure. So that that's what you're seeing there, which is something that um, you know some people don't want to get into uh, repair and maintenance because they believe that faults are normally related to the uh, software of the PCB. So yeah. that's, that's not what you what you see in your in your world, in your environment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So just uh, according to our experience, we have never faced huge amount of PCBs. Uh, having a failure on software on the microcontroller or or PLC, yeah. so most of the time it's hardware affected and it's easily can be just repaired by changing this faulty components using a high quality of soldering. It's always a matter yes, of a skilled guy. If you need a training regarding a soldering procedure, if you need a training how to use a modern uh, automatically tested testers or several equipments like Boardmaster, like a modern oscilloscope or infrared camera, you know. So it's not a so big deal. You can just train your skills, your, your person in, in order to develop their skills. And that's it. That's it. You will never deal uh, so many times with software during the repair. That's very good. That's really good. Really? So uh, pretty much that's it. It's just a real example taken from our experience. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. That's, Thank that's, you. that's really good. Thank you. Thanks, Kanat. Again, uh, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a chance to uh, have time to um, um, uh, discuss some of these points later on. Um, let's bring in um, Sankalp. Sankalp Maudik from Chile. 
Sankalp works for a company called um, Smart Ice in Chile, and it's a company that uh, services the food processing industry in southern Chile. Uh, Sankalp is an electronics uh, repair expert and uh, possibly one of the few Indian nationals to speak Spanish as a native Chilean. And I, I tried his Spanish, it was really, really good. Sankalp loves electronics, and he says that he's able to control his blood pressure using an ammeter. And uh, Senkalp's employer, as I, I mentioned before, is a technology company supporting the food processing industry in the south of Chile. Welcome, Senkalp. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the, for the introduction. Um, well, <clears throat> I would like to add a little bit to that. I'm, I'm just 26 years old, and uh, uh, after listening to the review from Kanat and Panos, I think uh, these guys have a lot of experience. Uh, compared to that, my experience uh, has been uh, very short, but uh, very challenging uh, because uh, I live in this part of the world where the repair, repairing the, the equipment is a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. One, for the logistic, two, for the knowledge, uh, three, for the, the competent uh, technicians that we have around. So uh, my, my experience before was about the, the uh, underwater robotics and underwater technology. And uh, in that also, I faced the same problem that whenever I wanted to repair something, uh, the, the standard deal, the traditional way was to replace it, you know? So for engineers like me, where's the fun in that? If you want to just replace stuff, uh, we, 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 uh, what, we are, what we do as an engineer is we repair stuff. And uh, in my previous company also, it happened that a lot of uh, documentation was missing a uh, lot of um, software were missing and so it made a huge deal for me to repair that but i enjoyed it uh, so now i work for uh, a company smart eyes who, uh, where we uh, offer the service of repairing equipment industrial equipment okay? so that's where i would like to go back uh, i'll stick i would like to stick to the topic if we are prepared to to repair the industrial equipment I would say, yes, we are. Matter of fact, uh, we are well prepared, uh, way better uh, than ever. So I have, uh, I have a lot of my friends uh, who are losing jobs, who are on the edge of losing jobs. And this is what I tell them. Uh, don't consider COVID-19 as a tragedy. Matter of fact, try to look a way out of it. Try to transform this tragedy uh, into an opportunity. Now, I'll give an example. Um, in this part of the world, here, the, the fish industry, uh, the Chilean economy, the fish industry really runs the Chilean economy. Okay? So the Chilean economy depends upon the, the fish industry, and the fish industry depends upon the uh, industrial equipment, and the industrial equipment needs repair, then it's maintenance. And that's where it gives a good platform for people like us, engineers, you know, technicians. So, so what happens is um, uh, here, the industry is a little bit brutal. They are very practical. They need rapid response. The problem here is even though most of the equipment are imported from Germany, from America, from Canada, uh, from Brazil, uh, but the problem, the problem with the, the, the original equipment manufacturer is that they, they themselves are not here. Their branches are here, okay? And they are not able to give a rapid response. Now the industry care less if they're going to lose the warranty, what they care is the rapid response. Now imagine, in the fish industry, uh, they are processing around 10,000, 20,000, maybe 40,000 fishes per hour. And every fish, I don't know, according to the, uh, the salmon, uh, salmon Atlantic, $15, $20 per fish, you do the math. So one hour, if the machines are not working, okay, that they are losing a huge deal. They are losing a huge money You're there because they are losing time, and time is money here. So they need, they need people like us who, who can come there with the plant, uh, if they are available 24 seven, great, who can fix the issues uh, on site, you know, rapidly. The problem with the original equipment manufacturer is that the only option they give is, okay, one, they're slow. Two, uh, they, they just replace stuff. Okay, three, it's more expensive, okay? And moreover, because of COVID-19, the logistic has uh, become slower. So I don't know how many, I have a lot of examples for that. Uh, matter of fact, today in the morning, I got a call from, um, from a plant, uh, from the technical manager, and he asked me the service. 
uh, there's a HMI that is broken. And because the HMI is not working, the entire machine you cannot manipulate. And again, they're losing a lot of uh, big time production there. So I know exactly why he called me. One, uh, if, he call, if he calls to the original equipment manufacturer, they're gonna take a while to respond. And the only thing that they're gonna give the solution is to replace. They, know, they don't need that. This is the time. This is the time where, uh, where the economy is, uh, is in risk. And we need equipment, we need technicians, we need competent uh, uh, people who can reduce the cost. Okay, who can uplift uh, this uh, this industry, the economy? Okay, and um, so there are a lot of examples. I mean, can you believe this? I went to one of the plant, and uh, they had uh, three or four PLCs from a German band. Okay, I I'm not gonna tell you which brand because because of the legal issues. But a um, lot of lot of PLCs were just uh, thrown away on the ground. So I went there to their warehouse and I asked them uh, why they are on the ground. Why are you not repairing them? They said that uh, they were just replaced and we don't know what to do with them. I took them to my workshop mm. and uh, you won't believe most of them had some silly issues. One was not turning on just because the CMOS battery was, uh, was drained. Okay, this 3.7 3 volt CMOS battery was drained. Uh, one was not having a video output just because the ribbon cable was having discontinuity, false contact. And um, then there was one PLC which was having problem in the video unit, the ICs, you know. Some of the, some of the, the computers, uh, many machines here use um, a dedicated computers. And, uh, and uh, many of these computers, uh, when they are broken, the original equipment manufactured, they just replace it. And I was able to repair it only by changing, changing some uh, logical ICs, you know, like SN7400 series, etc. So you see, it's possible. Uh, and these, all the repairs that I have done has not costed me a lot. It was very easy to repair. Uh, what it needed was a lot of, uh, you have to be persistent. You have to be persistent, you have to have a lot of patience. Uh, and uh, what, what I have seen, yeah, what, the, what Kanat and uh, Panos was telling that 80% of this equipment you can repair. Yes, there's a limitation that when it comes to software, uh, you cannot do more about it. You cannot do much about it. But uh, believe me, there is a big uh, opportunity, big platform for all of uh, young engineers who are in the house uh, jobless. So, you know, so this is why, this is how actually I am trying to transform this tragedy into an opportunity, you know, trying to find a place uh, in this industry, trying to understand the necessity. You know, as they say, the uh, necessity is the mother of invention, you know, so this is the necessity uh, to right. understand this. So you won't believe this. I was reading uh, on the website of WHO and they were saying that uh, in, in, in hospital, they have around 50 to 80% of equipment which are broken. Mm. They're just uh, aside, you know, getting dust on it. So there you go. There we have an opportunity. There we have uh, uh, something that we can do. And matter of fact, it will be a great help to, to the society because we will, be, we will be making this instrument run on time rather than you know being delaying delaying stuff so this is how my experience has been so far my experience has been um, more about the underwater robotics and underwater technology and recently i got into industrial equipment and i will be honest every year uh, in my life the challenges are like getting more difficult than the previous year you know just like a video game every year it's getting more difficult but i'm learning it i'm doing it uh, and I'm, we'll be honest, I'm not 100% times I'm able to fix this stuff, but 95% time, yes, I am. And uh, right now, what uh, on a huge, what, what I'm missing, honestly, is uh, AVI equipment. I understand, I understand completely. I read about them and uh, I, I, I see myself uh, completely, I, I see myself incomplete uh, without this equipment. Um, and, and I will get it. It's, it's for me, it's like a, having a Lamborghini, you know, you need it. That's it. If you give me two options, Lamborghini and, you know, ABI equipment, I will go for the ABI equipment. Because <laughs> like, I know, yeah. I know simple. exactly what they do. I know exactly. I'm, and I really want to meet the person who have developed the software mm -hmm. because I'm mesmerized. It's awesome. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to, so, we're going to bring you here to, uh, we're going to bring you here to uh, ABI one day. You'll be able to uh, meet Gareth be awesome. team in person. Okay. The time will come. So time will come so I'm sure you will. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. So, yeah. So this is what um, you know. Uh, what I would like to tell 
all, okay. all the people. I will not call everyone jobless, but mm -hmm. uh, whoever are a little bit uh, worried about the situation, I would say, let's transform this tragedy into an opportunity. And we can do that. Right. Yes, 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 we can. Yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, uh, Kanatin and uh, um, uh, Panos, Ricardo, Senkal, thank you very much for your introduction. So let's move on to uh, questions. And, and I, I really wanted to uh, maybe build on some of the, the points that you raised there during your introductions. We're going to try to um, keep the questions into uh, uh, three categories, main categories, one being people and uh, more than qualification, more than just being, you know, having a a degree or you know a certificate what are the key skills engineers and technicians should develop to be successful in repair and maintenance for instance uh, issues around spare parts equipment required and supply chain difficulties uh, documentation training and diagnostic processes okay and my, my colleague here and youtube star Muniba Ahmed is going to uh, be texting me the questions uh, that are coming through the chat I've, I've seen, I can see uh, some good interaction between the guys there, uh, which is which is fantastic, and uh, keep that going. Um, I've got a first question here, and uh, you know, you've been mentioning about how how you've been handling repairs. You know, the, the four of you have been handling repairs there, but would you would you uh, would you be able to to give me the the top three skills that uh, technicians and engineers should have? And the top maybe top three equipment as well the hardware that uh, you would uh, recommend for, for people to have people in this industry to have just bear in mind that um, one of the the objectives that we have with this um, webinar is really to uh, provide the technicians the engineers who are sat at home have been furloughed or or have been uh, 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 they are not able to work because of the lockdown and they're concerned about their future, concerned about their prospects and you know, moving forward. We really want to give them some guidance. We want to uh, open up their minds to uh, repair and maintenance as something that we believe is going to be in high demand you know, throughout this crisis uh, for the reasons that the four of you discussed um, today already. So, so uh, I think your inputs on the skills that these guys need to uh, develop be very important in terms of the equipment as well. I think we, um, uh, I want to hear from you, you know, this, you, we, we, we've heard from you that repair is possible, repair is feasible, but I, I really want to drill a bit more into that. So who wants to go first? Panos, Kanat, uh, Ricardo, Senkal, perhaps you, Panos? Can you give us a... Can you tell us a bit about, you know, uh, the top three skills and the top three main important equipment you have in your lab today, for instance? Off you go. Okay. Number one, based on my personal experience, is the willing to take the challenge and spend the time to find on what's going wrong with this problem, with this fault. As uh, Kanat said, the, be the, mo the, the main problems in boards is hardware based. And I would say that is, uh, the main problems are uh, related with the anything that has high current, like the power entrance and the power output. The problems, it comes, it's there, I would say, 70% of the times. But back to the topic, what's the, ba the, main, the three main skills? As I said, basic knowledge of uh -huh. electronics to understand how things work. Second is the willing of spending the time to find uh, the problem. And the third skill is the skill of troubleshooting. The skill of, uh, you cannot uh, explain that skill uh, in a sentence. It's, uh, it's something that no one can show you how to be a troubleshooter. You have to find your own way because there are several ways. There are several ways to do that. It's, I believe the most important uh think for um uh, as a as a skill is the willing to take the challenge 
for myself, based on my experience. Mm -hmm. I have do, I've been doing this since I was a kid. I always saying yes. I was seeing something that I had zero clue. What is that? How it works? And I was saying yes. I can. I'll I'll give it a try to repair it. So have have basically that curiosity. Yeah. That yeah. Curiosity and 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 being persistent in, in trying to find out. You yeah, know, you have to have on. the disciplines. The, you have to have the disciplines of and focusing to fix to fix it to make it work. There that's is great. a way. There, it great has great to be a way. Yeah. No, that's very good advice. And, and in terms of in terms of the gear, you know, the, the repair and maintenance gear. What what do you think yeah. that uh, every repair and maintenance you know uh, workshop should have? Maybe the, the top three systems or technology. Yeah. What I. When I first started working with these systems, I was working with minimal systems. Most of my repairs, especially back home, it was just with my meter and a simple oscilloscope. Just that. It was hard, very hard. Many times I wasn't able to fix it. But since I came here, I managed, I did my uh, a good survey in the market, and luckily I found ABI. I managed and I purchased the system. I purchased a Boardmaster system, a complete system, which is uh, definitely a Lamborghini, uh, a Ferrari. I don't know. It's the top system in the market. Definitely, it makes your life easy. When when I had uh, Fozzy here for the training, uh, I was laughing all, all, most of the time. I couldn't believe. How capable is that system? Because I, I didn't have, when I purchased it and it came in the box, of course, I had the curiosity to open it, you remember, mm -hmm. before Fozzy comes. I wasn't sure how that thing can do the troubleshooting with such an efficient way. And once Fozzy starts showing us how it works and what can be done, I was amazed. I was amazed. Definitely a tool like that is the best tool but still you might have the best equipment in the world if you don't have the right skill set to use it it's a useless very expensive piece of equipment yeah it's an expensive turns into an expensive paperweight as i normally say yeah you're gonna be having it sitting and collecting dust just sitting there but it's a machine that if you use it the right way you can do a lot. You can do a lot. It will keep you busy forever. Mm -hmm. It's a That's great. It's a great piece of equipment. Total is worth the investment. And I I got this machine not to open a repair business. I got this machine to to sustain my maintenance business because, mm -hmm. as I said, I'm facing all the time faulty boards. I'm doing a lot of repairs on uh, CNC plasma cutting machines, and I'm finding faulty boards and I'm making the repair. I'm, I'm using it in my boards, but as soon as the people see that I can do repairs, they start sending me more work for a repair, which is, which is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's really good. So, so in, in, apart from, from the board master, you know, uh, the ABI solution there, what else do you think it's, it's important, Panos? At least some basic instruments like uh, a multimeter, a portable, a portable oscilloscope. It's it's a great tool. It helps a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. You don't need too many tools. It it it, it depends. It depends how uh, how complex is the system. Sometimes you have to have very sophisticated portable tools. Mm -hmm. This is so. Uh, it's mostly for when you're dealing with very special equipment okay that's good that's really good i i want to bring in uh, uh maybe some of the other um, panelists with there some of the, uh, the speakers perhaps Kanat, because you earlier on Kanat, you were talking about um how alstom wanted to invest in, in this repair center to uh, number one provide better quality technical services for the customers locally you also mentioned about uh, obsolescence and, and and wanting to uh um, um not to be exposed let's say to the risk of lessons and as i mentioned at the beginning this is something that is affecting industry in general uh we're seeing 
uh, we are seeing uh, um, technology becoming obsolete to just you know, in just a few years, and the support drops, and you know, and the end user, that end user could be a car manufacturer, it could be a, um, um, a food processing industry, or pharmaceutical. They are left with a very expensive piece of kit with very little support. Okay, um, so so when when it comes to the uh, your uh, application, which is locomotive repair and maintenance, and the work that you guys did down so brilliantly. I wanted to hear from you on the same question, top three skills and uh, the three main equipment that you have in your lab there. So, well, uh, I would divide the skills because you have a technical skills to be for sure, uh, be present on, on a guy, on, on, a, on a technician or engineer, whoever it is like uh, electrical engineering background, mm -hmm. the ability to read electrical schematics, knowing principles of passive electrical components or analog IC circuits, digital IC circuits, and just simply understand the function of um, electrical equipment he or she is going to be repaired. For, for instance, in our case, it's locomotive, PCB, and we know the functionality of this PCB, which are outputs and inputs. And in this case, it's not only um, PCB design skills required, it's also required to troubleshoot a locomotive. So it's always combination of two technical skills like a PCB knowing or troubleshooting and whole equipment knowing and troubleshooting where you are taking this PCB off, right? Mm -hmm. If you are talking about skills which is not related to technical, like soft skills, maybe characters, I would say that uh, this guy, First of all, has to be real motivated to to continue to uh, develop himself in uh, electrical aspects and electrical engineering uh, area. Let's say he also has to be curious. He also has to be a very he 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 just simply has to love has to love this job. Because it's always time consuming. It's always lack of information. You need to you need to find this information some uh, everywhere. You need to talk to several experts. You need to increase your networking because it's always time consuming. Even to what is repair, it's eighty percent of diagnos diagnosis of, of of the PCB of the faulty faulty PCB, and the rest is just soldering. That's it. Or well, you, you will spend a lot of time to to find the failure in the beginning for diagnosis. In in this case, you need to collect knowledge every day, every time. So, and this guy has to love, has to love this, and uh, it's my it person. Needs to have passion. Needs to have passion. Yeah, yeah. passion. Exactly right. Um, the second question is about equipment. I would say yeah, it's 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 simple. Uh, starting from personal multimeters, oscilloscope, LC meters. I don't know, semiconductor testers, power supplies, sort of them, uh, thermal camera, it's like a modern, you know, way of uh, checking the heating elements on the power on PCB. Mm -hmm. And just uh, finally um, having uh, automotive testing equipment like Boardmaster, you know, and to pretty much that's it, and everyone knows what su what what's supposed to be uh, in a common laboratory or common electrical repair workshop. So there's nothing special, but in our case again, so just to take an experience from my industry, we should have uh, the the build up or assemble some test bench because imagine you just take a PCB from equipment, okay, you have made you have made diagnosis, you define the faulty components, you replaced it, now you have to test it. When you test it, you should put back it on equipment. But imagine if this equipment is really expensive, big, or something like that. It's not. It's not easy to to go somewhere where this equipment is installed and to test it. You found that it's not working. You are coming back to your workshop and you are spending this time every time to just check if your soldering was done correctly, if you define the faulty components correctly, etc. So in our case, uh, we are challenging with assembling and developing testing equipment. In a workshop, simply saying we're just taking this whole equipment from locomotive and uh, building it up in a workshop by connecting to the required power supply, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much that's it. But we need to make sure that everything is okay done uh, while assembling on workshop, and you're just copying the equipment from locomotive from asset or machine wherever to your workshop. Then. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm just uh, sharing my experience. The question was about the standard procedures that you and the team there have developed for repair and maintenance, okay? And how important these procedures are for your job. We simply defined what we are going to repair, what is interesting for us to repair. Those items will be listed. Secondly, we have defined what kind of tools, what kind of equipment, what kind of knowledge, what kind of skills, and uh, how big workplace we need. The third, after that, we defined what kind of trainings, like uh, soldering, warnishing, testing, whatever, we should obtain. And uh, then we just set up a workflow or a guidance for troubleshooting and repair and put it on, uh, on the paper by validation with uh, electrical engineering, with industrial manager, operational manager, plus quality manager. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everything is documented. Uh, let's say you, uh, um, you are facing some problem with locomotive. First of all, the troubleshooter goes over, over there, the place where locomotive is located, making troubleshooting, defining the faulty system. Then the system is taking off. You have a procedure how to troubleshoot locomotive, like what, what kind of records and reports you have to done after troubleshooting. And you have outputs, you have already signals, and you share all of this report with faulty system or equipment to a work, workshop, electrical repair workshop. If I would say the current situation, we already have a boardmaster kind of test flow for the uh -huh. specific equipment, for the specific uh, PCB uh, we have already um, created and stored. Uh -huh. So, and this guy simply goes through, through this uh, test flow, checking, knowing the reference of the PCB, finding this flow, it changing um, this PCB from the beginning to the end. Right. Brilliant. Just comparing with the repair, of course, because it's also written in procedures that you need to take the, the good one and to compare with uh, faulty one. But in case it's, it's if it's from the beginning, but if it's already existing, the masks or the uh, testing flow, you don't need any more uh, the, good, the good one. Mm. And you just compare with the uh, faulty one. That's it. Okay. So, um, what essential equipment do you have there in, in the lab at uh, Bessadruk, Ricardo? So, uh, I think you must have a good multimeter, a bench multimeter. Uh, uh, it depends of the kind of PC boards you repair in it. So, um, a very good uh, handwork system for uh, iron solder and hot air and tweezers and because you can find you can find the defective uh, component, but you cannot take it out of the board. You cannot fix it. So it's it's the part of the process. Uh, yes. You spend a lot of time to find uh, to find the fault and tests and invest in equipments, uh, very good ones. You can uh, show which which component is not working, but if you cannot take it out. And so the a new one again. You cannot fix all the board, you know. So you have you have to have, in my opinion, the most important is the solder station. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, also the thermal cameras. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it helps you to to analyze it. even after you repair the board. If you can prove it at the bench, you can power it up and make some tests. We can. Analyze if uh, this uh, repair you guarantee that the, this kind of repair will not bring you problems uh, short, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is a very good to to know to to analyze if both important. And the question that I asked for uh, asked Kanat uh, earlier on about creating procedures, creating test procedures, make sure that everyone follows the same standard. What, what do you think about that? We start as as a line. Uh, you don't want to to start running if you cannot walk. Yes. So sometimes you can fix a board just to look into that. You can see spots of heating and bad contacts and. Uh, uh, Especially in old PC boards, we can see uh, oxidation, um, something like that. So 
Start with looking to the board, talk to her, talk to it, no. <clears throat> look at look at the board, take a take a, a visual analyze. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you start to, to prove the most uh, disparate components. Most problems come from a uh, diode, uh, solid capacitor. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you need to start from beginning step by step. You don't, so prove the, 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 the disparate semiconductors, diodes, capacitors, look at, uh, at the solder. Uh, and then you can, you can, you can uh, go ahead, you know. Good, good. <laughs> And, and, and since, I, since I have you there, Ricardo, I've got another question that has come through uh, to you here. The um, question for you is, what kind, of, what kind of expertise is required to maintain and repair equipment without the help of the OEMs? Because you mentioned that uh, you know, repair in time is obsolete equipment, therefore there is no help from the OEMs. So what kind, in terms of expertise, what do you think, uh, what kind of expertise do you think is required? Most, uh, most, most, important in my opinion is to keep the basis you know uh you have you have to you have to have in mind the, the principle of working off a simple component like diodes like uh capacitors if you have it in your mind you can analyze it any circuit it's not important if the company give you all information right you need to know the basis you know mm -hmm. and this is the way to 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 go. Mm -hmm. And in terms in terms of you know you get a PCB with no information, no schematics. Let's say, you know, you mentioned about doing a visual analysis and checking components and talking to the PCB. I, I love that expression. Talk to the PCB, let it talk to you, and uh, which is which is great. I mean, it's part of the troubleshooting uh, analysis. But do you uh, plug the PCB? You do power on test, or do you do power off test first? What what do you do, and what kind of gear, what kind of equipment do you use for that? Usually, most of our uh, initial tests use the VI technology. You know, mm -hmm. uh, as you know how every component works, we can analyze the signature of the, the VI. And most time, if even you don't have uh, a mask of you don't have any information about a, about a good uh, good pcb you can just to see the signature you can uh, know if there is a problem with that component so we start most time with vi and, and if you cannot find an, anything about about that with vi so we start to prove with functional tests using a uh, ABI equipment. Right. Okay. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, uh, I've got, got loads of questions coming in here. I don't know whether we're going to have time uh, to do all these, but I've got a question here for Panos. Uh, Panos, uh, the question here is with regards to uh, what approach uh, should the industry be taking now with regards to repair and maintenance? And someone else asked a similar question about uh, how to encourage industry people to take up in-house third-party repairs. Um, would you would you like to uh, comment on on this this uh, this question, Panos? Uh, sure. Yeah. Definitely, the industries, all the industries, they have to encourage their existing technical staff for start implementing in-house repairs. It sounds, uh, it might sound hard for uh, some technicians that uh, all of a sudden, because they used to replace everything and uh, now they have to deal with uh, repairing it, which is completely different. Because I believe anyone can re can replace a board. Even a child can repair re replace a board. But to repair it is a different story. Definitely, the industry has to encourage their people for start repairing. They have to get the equipment. I know 
I would say almost every industry now, uh, they don't have an in-house shop. Mm -hmm. even, even a simple working bench for their technician to, like, to, to dismantle an electronic uh, board, to, to take out some parts. Like they did not even have a soldering iron. Mm -hmm. So they have to spend the time and some some money on setting up a, uh, a workhouse in their uh, in their plant. Mm -hmm. So their technicians they can start doing in-house repairs. Okay, I've got I've got a question here for. Um for um, Senkal. So um, the question is about fear. You know, people being afraid of doing uh, repair and uh, maintenance or touching the PCBs and having those misconceptions. What do you think about that, uh, Senkal? You know, do you, do, you, do you think people should, you know, should uh, give it a go regardless, you know, what kind of uh, uh, approach they should have if they find themselves in that situation? That's a very awesome question. Matter of fact, it will answer. I would like to answer it in a in a way that it will tell you about my personal history. Uh, look, what happened? What happened? In uh, I have a very small experience in electronics engineering. I graduated when I was twenty one, uh, and since then five years I've been into this. And uh, the two companies that I worked, um, I never, I never ever got. Uh, documentations to fix the, uh, the, the PCBs, to fix the robotics. Um, one, even though I was working in the original equipment manufacturer, they always had the issues with the documentation for some reasons. And uh, so it gave me a challenge. And the challenge was like, you have to do it. So uh, there, was, uh, there was no space for me to feel the fear, you know. It has to be done. That's it. There is no so this is the mentality that one should understand one should have is that there you do not have the any other option the only option is that you take the pcb you fix it so that's the attitude that you need to have in the beginning so no need to fear um yes uh, there are consequences but uh, most of the time when the pcb is already broken so there is no much big harm that you can do um so it's 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 there's a lot of times I uh, get to hear this that okay if you you um, repair this PCB the uh, the owner is gonna lose the warranty from the original equipment manufacturer and uh, I'm like why why what's wrong that I'm doing if uh, if I find a IC uh, let's say it's from I don't know um, uh, linear technology let's say mm -hmm. uh, and I understand that it's uh, it's a, it's a let's say step down converter and I can just uh, buy it in the market. I can import it and I replace it with the original IC, uh, not the, the duplicate one. Mm -hmm. So I know, I know the, the PCB is going to work. Yeah. And, and the PCB is going to be always at the same health as it was before. I know mm -hmm. that. I can certify that. So I don't consider like the original equipment manufacturer as the ultimate authority, you know, to, to say that, okay, this equipment is, is not worthy anymore because it has been manipulated by engineers. Mm. It doesn't make any sense because these guys who are making the policies in the end of the day, they are also people like us, you know, they are not like God in this sense, like, okay, they have the ultimate authority. So I would say there is nothing to fear about. There is nothing to fear about. Um, and, and keep this in mind, but there is no other option. The only option is that you have to fix it. You have to fix it and you will. So mm -hmm. be positive. You have to be very patient about it. Sometimes it has reached, uh, for me also, it has happened that I reached to a level that I get frustrated because you're giving and giving, you're trying to find the fault, uh, especially with the equipments that I have. It's not that I don't have the best, uh, I don't have, I have the, uh, the worst equipment. I have some good equipments. And uh, sometimes it's difficult for me also and uh, but you should not give up you know okay take a break let it go for today we'll continue tomorrow so i say that's how one should go you know mm. there's always a way there's always a way good that's brilliant thank you very much Sankalp. um right 
we try to uh, we, we were trying to uh, keep this within one hour and it's been one hour and 20 minutes already and uh, the questions don't stop coming through and they are great questions so it seems to me that we're going to have probably to do another webinar on this subject soon considering all the uh, the attention and interest that everyone has um, uh, shown so far on, 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 on the, uh, the topic. So I want to bring in Fauzi, Fauzi Taha, who is uh, who's waiting for us there in America. And he's, um, Fauzi, he's our um, product manager in the US and Canada. Um, he's, uh, he's been working with us for, you know, for several years. So I want to, uh, to hear from him. He's going to show, he's just going to give a five to 10 minutes overview, you know, on the board mass, talk about revenge briefly, because I understand that, you know, I know that some of you haven't heard about ABI or the board master equipment before. Uh, so we just want to give you a, that quick glimpse of what the system can do. Uh, Fauzi, are you there? Hi, William. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you fine now. Uh, I, I don't have uh, yeah oh yes your webcam is now on but just just before you take it away I just want also to work uh, uh, um, uh, Ricardo was talking about the eye and, and again people may not know what the eye is people may not know what power off test mm -hmm. is um, you know I just want to encourage people to go to our YouTube channel uh, after this meeting don't go there, there now but um, you can then through uh, uh, through the links you can follow the ABI Labs video series, which we started uh, a month or so ago. We are in the fifth episode. Every Friday, a new episode is released, and uh, this is precisely what we're covering at this moment in time. So we're really exploring the different options, uh, the different power up options that you have available on the uh, on the board master. But Halsey, take it away, please. Thank you, William. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for sh for uh, being part of this webinar. I really appreciate it. My name is Fauzi Taha. I am the ABI uh, product manager in USA and Canada. I've been working with ABI for m about 13 years now. Um, I um, I'm a certified trainer. Um, I'm very very experienced with the products and applications. Um, I supported ABI in Egypt for three years. Uh, before I came to the U.S. in in 2010, and to do my masters and then get my masters in electrical engineering, um, I, I support them in Egypt. So I, I worked in in different countries uh, with ABI. I uh, but now I've been in the U.S. for about uh, 10 years, and I've been working with ABI for the 10 years. So there are three main things. Uh, first one is very we have a very intuitive and user friendly software. Um, the other the second point is the the system is very flexible and the third point is it the best one it saves a lot of money so um, i want i want to talk about each one and just give you uh, my thoughts about each one so uh, first one was a very intuitive and user friendly software basically the software uh, comes with tests ready for you out of the box uh, no coding needed no programming needed to 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 start the tests right the, the layout is very clean uh, it's easy to navigate as you can see here the layout is very clean it's it's, it's very organized right uh, you can uh, see the instruments on the left side this is the the main window where you have you're going to see your uh, um, instruments right your test uh, applications if you want to go to a certain instrument you just you know go click it and you have your instrument in front of you so uh, this is one of the main things uh, customers loved about the software right uh, also the uh, reporting capability right we we can generate reports uh, here when we build our tests right you can generate a report that you can share with your customers right a report that you can share with your teammates right your supervisor you want to test a component test a board and you want to get a report so the, the reporting feature is available and the, the, also the other main part is the documentation piece you can document all of your test sequence right uh, the, the gentleman's uh, the gentleman in, in the call mentioned about test flow and mentioned about the, the test procedure, right? When you see a board, you can document all that in, in a test flow. Uh, so the documentation is very important and it's very important for management too, right? Uh, you you want to keep your, your team's knowledge, right? You, you don't want someone to leave the shop with all the knowledge and you don't know uh, anything about what they're doing or you, you don't have the, the know-how to do their work. So... Uh, also, the software allows you to record all of that. Going to the next point, which is flexible. So means flexible. Uh, we have 
in the software or the system a lot of test capabilities, right? different varieties, right, of, of test of tests you can apply, right? We have, uh, I'll give you an example. We have like power off testing, so you can do power off testing at, at a component level or uh, or um, or or a, a board level. So you can test the whole board, or you can test just a single IC. So this is a good uh, flexibility here. You can do power on and power off. Power on means that you have to power up the board to test it. Power off, you don't need to power up the board to test it. Uh, in circuit or out of circuit. In circuit means the components in board, you can test them while they're in the board, or you can take them out and test them out of circuit. Um, uh, digital and analog, see? So this is the flexibility you have. Um, this flexibility allows you basically to troubleshoot any printed circuit board, right? There's nothing you're gonna stop you from testing a board. Um, uh, the gentleman on the call, mentioned, nothing should stop you, right? You can test anything. So easy to use, flexibility. Uh, the main one is saving a lot of money, right? Uh, and saving a lot of money is different from one customer to another. You know, I was, I was, well, I was thinking whether you could potentially demonstrate, uh, do a sure. quick test sure. uh, for us. And um, just while we were preparing there, uh, you know, you just touched on a very important point, you know, about money, saving money, how much money can you save? And, and that story of the um, National Guide, Tell us about it. What, 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 you know, what happened? He, he managed to repair it, didn't he? Yes. So, uh, um, so I went to the National Guard, give them training. They have the boardmaster system, and this guy, um, his name is Russell. He reminds me with Panos, <laughs> honestly. He's a very sharp, smart guy. Um, good with troubleshooting skills. He knows uh, how to look at the board, how to talk to the board, right? Uh, uh, and 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 knows where to start. And with the tool he had. The boardmaster, you know, it's it, it's it gave him all he needed, right? Okay, I need every I need the tools to help me to troubleshoot the board. They had a, a mobile skiff or like a vehicle, big vehicle where they ke keep their telecommunication equipment, right? This mobile skiff was not functioning at all because they, the edge back system, right? And it was there for uh, I'm saying a year or two, so it's right there sitting doing nothing because nobody knows how to troubleshoot it. The OEM cannot support it. They, 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 they don't know how to fix it. This is like $10 million sitting doing nothing. So he, with his initiative and his the tools he had with our system, he decided, like, let's take a look what's going on with the HVAC system or what's going on with this system. So he was able to identify that the HVAC system has an issue and he wanted to do further troubleshooting. See, okay, let's get the PCB from that system and, and see what's going on. And he was able to identify a little simple problem. It's a diode. Yeah. Using our solution, he was able to detect that. So he fixed the diode. The HVAC system is back uh, working, up and running, and the whole stiff is working. Yeah. This is right there, in, 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 right there, $10 million, right? Mm -hmm. Saved for yeah, the ten, taxpayers ten, here ten, in the and, US. I, and again, ten million dollars saved for the taxpayer in the US. But not only that, it's, it's just is is proving the OEM wrong because the OEM basically told them you can't repair it because it's obsolete. We have no documentation and so forth. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and that's that's a challenge too with the customers here, right? With people here, with the, the OEM cannot support it, or maybe the OEM even out of business, right? They cannot do anything with it, and they don't know even how to troubleshoot it. So with this kind of equipment, nothing can stop you. And that was the, the idea with that technician, with Russell. And again, just 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 for the sake of time, really, um, I've got so many so many different stories here that we could go through. But tell us what what we're looking at here. What, what is it that you do? Um, our customers uh, in the U.S. they you know the labor is kind of expensive, and they want something quick, something that helps them to troubleshoot the board quicker. You know, we know multimeter scopes and all these kind of tools takes time. But here, I wanted to show you a a, a a way where we do a board level check. So the board level check basically checks the whole board and sees you know the changes that happen from a good board and a suspect board. This is a power off technique. So the good thing about it, you don't have to power up the board. So what I'm showing you here. I'm looking at the board as if it's a one IC or a one component and getting from the from the uh, edge connector here I have 32 pins that I want to read from my system to to basically learn about the impedance characteristics of the board what's going on inside the board so this this the way to do this doesn't need a lot of experience you are connecting to the board getting the good signatures the good uh, characteristics from the good board which I'm showing you now. So right now, every pin on this connector give you a specific 
signature or a curve or a characteristic. And what I'm doing, I'm storing this from a good board, right? And then when you have any suspect board, right, coming into the shop or a board that you want to check, this is, could be the first step, right? Go do a board level check. Is this board actually faulty or not? Uh, you can uh, check it from the edge connector. You don't need to, and, and, and also it's easier because you don't want to keep looking, uh, checking every chip, every IC, where is the problem, right? And this is, again, the fear part, the mm. fear that people talk about. People are afraid to, oh, I don't know where to start, or these are all components, how to test them. Nothing better than testing the board under power of conditions and knowing and let the system guide you where could be the problem. So right now I'm doing a board level check. I stored the good board, but what I'm going to do here, I, I ran the test, I stored all the signatures, but I want to show you, I'm going to create a fault on the board. So basically it's, I'm, I'm trying to simulate a faulty board right now, right? So basically you're gonna uh, unplug your cable and put it on a new card, the suspect card, the card that you want to check now. So I, I basically created a fault, and I want to show you how you will be able to detect that from the from the edge connector. So as you can see here, the system was able to find issues on the card, right, or, or problems uh, on the card because I created that fault, mm -hmm. right? So tells you okay pin number 1 14 and 21 this is this is this is there's an issue right so mm -hmm. that guides you to where to trace the problem on the card you don't need to uh, basically <laughs> check every ic right tells you okay pin number 21 if you have some knowledge or you know if you have schematics this is you know in case you have that this is a really good way to test your board mm -hmm. you, uh, and know where could be the problem so you trace the pin to the IC or to the component or to the area on the board to figure out where you can start doing the troubleshooting, where you mm -hmm. can start doing the IC checking. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to show you how the system will help you to detect these problems at the edge connector, right? This is one way we do it, right? And it's it's very easy, you know, because I, I don't have schematics, I can compare the boards and I can, uh, even if I don't have schematics, right? I can compare the boards and find the differences between a good board and a suspect board. And we did a lot of that with General Electric um, here in the US with the uh, renewable energy, General Electric. Mm, yeah. They have a big challenge. They don't know which boards are getting failed or which boards are passing. Why? Because the te field technicians go to the wind turbine. Um, I do, they replace all of the boards. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't do any further troubleshooting. They do any they place all the boards and they say, you know what? Here are the boards. You deal with it. I want to say 80% of these boards are good boards. Right. So they are using this kind of technique to do a go to go check and figure out which are the bad boards, which are the good boards, and, and then separate them and then look into the bad boards and do further investigation. Right. They they have four million worth of boards sitting there. I as, I'm, I'm thinking more than half of them are good boards. So imagine this amount of money, it's just sitting there, they're losing this money. So this is how oh, they can millions. save their money. Yeah, yeah. talking millions. Four millions, mm -hmm. yes, four million sitting there because they don't know even the good boards are good or bad, right? I just wanted to, I wanted to uh, tell us a, a bit about the system that you have next to it as well. I think that, that's the revenge system. Yeah? Sure, what, yes. Briefly, what, what the system can do. So the revenge system is also controlled by the same software. It's right mm -hmm. here. Again, see how clean and easy you can get into it and, and go through the steps. The revenge system is basically used for schematic learning. So the system can learn the, the board, the, 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 inter the connections between the components, and you can get your net list through that system and then generate your schematics. Uh, of course, you know schematics are very important, or, or, or I want to say circuit diagrams also are very important to troubleshoot the boards, right? It can help you to do board level checks. It can help you to better troubleshoot the, your boards, right? Our board master is capable of testing the components on boards without schematics, but having the schematics is also another uh, good uh, uh, option to have. So the revenge system will get the schematics from these uh, boards. It's a power of process. It learns the connections between the components and then generate the net list you need to import to your CAD software to get your schematics. Mm. Wow, that's brilliant. And 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 uh, so, so you have this, this instrument there, so you have the setup, components, the scanning. So it's, it's a pretty um, 
straightforward process, right? Right, and you mm -hmm. go to setup. Setup here is basically mapping the channels to uh, the board clips, right, or components. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a very simple process. So you see the cards there, so you just map the cards, right, uh, and then just say, okay, these cards will get these kind of clips and components. And here you list the components that you are going to uh, basically clip on. Uh, are you going to? They are part of the schematics. So you need to add the the, the components to that list. Uh, very easy process. You're gonna just see what components you have and add that. And and we have a lot of uh, e um, automate automating ways, right? Automation here in adding parts and copying parts. So it's gonna make the process much faster. Then the scanning process here will uh, learn <laughs> the connections between the components, right? The, the netlist, what we call, right? And knows, all right, where is pin one from IC one is connected where, and pin two from IC one is connected to which IC. So it's gonna basically learn all these connections and show you a scan history in, 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 in the software. And in the end, it generates the netlist for you. So you can export that file and put it in your CAD software to get your schematics. OK. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really good. That's, um, you know, it, it, a lot of companies don't, or a lot of, uh, in, in a lot of circumstances, you don't need to recreate the schematic for the whole PCB. You may want to focus just on the uh, section of the PCB where you know, historically, uh, you, you're more likely to uh, to uh, have problematic, you know, component, uh, your attention and, and use revenge for that as well. That's possible, isn't it, uh, also? Yep. Oh, you don't have to do the whole board, right, mm -hmm. William? We can we can do a portion of the board, right, or or section that some some customers they they get the schematics from like from from the OEMs and they they are not updated. You can update that too, right? You can, uh, you know, update the schematics. You can uh, change, check, check the modifications, right? The different revisions through learning different sections. So you have that capability as well. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. I think this is this is all what we have, you know, time for um, today, guys. Um, thanks for uh, staying with us, and uh, to everyone who. Um, uh, who joined us today from all these different countries. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, come in and, and watch this presentation. I really want to thank uh, Kanat, uh, Senkal, Panos, Ricardo. You guys were brilliant. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of you out there uh, watching this live or watching the recording uh, will hopefully be thinking differently now about preparing maintenance after speaking to these people and hearing them uh, uh, talk about how they are succeeding in repair and maintenance. Repair and maintenance and repair of uh, electronic PCBs is not just feasible, I think it is uh, a necessity, as some of you said, and this is what the industry should be uh, focusing on. And we, we believe that with the right skills and with the right gear, with the right equipment, with the management that is empowering technicians and engineers to really um, take on the job, they can. there's a lot of money that can be saved. You mentioned about uh, uh, National Guard saving $10 million by repairing a, an obsolete piece of system. We have Lego, Mexico, you know, in, in the first quarter of using our system, they had uh, saved $40,000 in PCBs that were have, would have to be uh, sent for replacement or, you know, sent uh, away for, for repair and maintenance. We have uh, the likes of Metro Sao Paulo that in five years from you know, internalizing the repair and maintenance processes, they saved $50 million, which is which is, you know, a lot of money. Renault, car manufacturer Renault, from uh, uh, subcontracting all the repair and maintenance, which was basically based on uh, swapping PCBs, bringing PCBs uh, in house, equipping equipping technicians, training them, using uh, allowing them to use the board master. They saved uh, uh, one million dollars in eighteen months. So there's there, there are many many examples. And, and the industry has changed, you know, it's moving forward. And, and, and this is this is what we're seeing here. And we're seeing um, companies not just focusing on corrective maintenance. They are investing in technology. AI is playing a part. They're bringing, of course, the board master uh, uh, um, reporting capabilities, all the data that you can extract from the board master. And, and that's being used in, uh, in predictive maintenance, which is, again, is, a, is the next level. So you don't actually wait for the PCB to break down. You analyze good PCBs and, and see uh, you test by testing them. Uh, on a regular basis, for instance, every 3,000, sorry, every 2,000 hours or every six months, let's say, you can see how components are degradating. And you can plan the what is the best, most cost-effective way of uh, 
providing intervention on that PCB, replacing components that are likely to break down, and doing that so way, way before the PCB fails, which reduces downtime, reduces you know uh, breakdowns and so forth. So, um, so this is what we wanted to uh, talk about today. We want to really to inspire people to think out of outside of the box, as you know, Sankal mentioned, and, and being brave, as as Panos mentioned as well, and and uh, and uh, you know that there, there are tools available, and there is technology. Uh, we are here to support you as well. So you know, uh, I'm, I'm, we we are pretty sure that um, this crisis, as Pano said, there, there's opportunities out there. And um, if you are, if you're watching this, or if you're watching uh, later uh, the recording, uh, we really want you to uh, think about, you know, what, how can you help your organizations to save money, okay? And speak to your managers about what you've just uh, discovered today, and, and these brilliant stories that we're talking about here, and 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 come up with some some creative ideas come and talk to us if you have any questions and let, let us help you you know help yourself and help your organization save money and 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 thrive and go through this crisis uh, uh um you know uh, and achieve the cost reduction that everyone is going to be talking about in the for the foreseeable future okay so we hope that we have uh, provided um these uh, these with these experiences with this this very informal chat the conversation that we had provide some guidance, um, um, some, some food for thought, okay? And uh, we're here to help you. If, uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, drop us a comment, you can send us an email. We we're looking forward to your feedback. You know, what did you think about the session? Send us your feedback to either my email, william.santos at abielectronics.co.uk. You can also send to marketing at abielectronics.co.uk. Don't forget to uh, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. As I mentioned before, there, there's always uh, something new coming up and this video will be available on YouTube as well. So uh, from me, these are my final words. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Fauzi, Ricardo, Kanat, and uh, Panos, um, Senkaup, everyone who joined us from around the world. Uh, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, okay? Thank you.